Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So the new Archon Quest interlude is finally out in Genshin Impact with the Wanderer. And oh my God, it was amazing. This quest has me questioning so many things and I have so many questions that are unanswered. I just need the next quest now. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this quest and what you think about the Wanderer so far in Genshin. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And before we get into it, here's a quick message from our sponsor. I wanted to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet's main mission is to make wallets better. With their sleek and minimal design, you could say goodbye to your old and bulky wallet. And right now, you can get the best offer using my link, ridge.com slash Doro44 to save up to 40% off through December 22nd. The Ridge wallet is awesome because it can hold up to 12 cards, plus there's room for cash. And having over 30 colors and styles to choose from, there's a reason why they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Ridge has you covered with your keys as well. I mean, who likes this jumbled mess? With the Ridge key case, it cleans up that entire clutter and it just makes carrying your keys around so much more simple. So make sure to click my link in the description below, ridge.com slash Doro44, to get up to 40% off through December 22nd. Come on, serious suggestions, please. Did I just start the Archon Quest? Here. It's supposed to be an essay, you understand? An essay. That means facts and logic. Did I just accidentally start the Archon Quest? <laughs> I didn't mean to. Oh, well. We're here now. Well, if it's facts and logic you're after, you shot yourself in the foot with your choice of research topic, didn't you? That's a Tara soon a mystery. When so much remains unexplained, Who's this guy? there's little to be objective about. Unless, of course, you restrict yourself to textual criticism. Who was this guy? Have we seen this guy yet? Have we seen this guy yet? Yeah, well, this is my teacher's area of research. I can't change that. But it's fascinating enough without having to sensationalize it, don't you think? The strange location, the missing details, a mysterious person. Why does this man sound like Ricky Gervais? That's so funny. He kind of does, actually. I want to write my essay on something interesting, and I'm interested in getting to the bottom of all this. That's the only reason I came to you. Yes, you came to me. So all the more... He does sound like Ricky Gervais. Books. The fact is, it's the dramatization that will make people want to read it. There's no getting around that. Uh, okay, but... Did one of them just mention Tatarasuna? But that's all the way in Imazuma. Is it just Paimon or is it kind of unusual for someone to... That would make sense as to why maybe Ido's a part of all this. <sighs> Everyone here is just going about their business. Maybe it really is just Paimon. Because people here are free to research pretty much anything. Well, still, let's go listen. Great. Let's go find out what this Tatarasuna mystery is all about. Bet. All right. I guess I'll go with my textual criticism and your editorial direction for the first draft. I have a feeling that the missing Kabuki Mono will end up being the main focus of this paper. Ugh. If only we knew where to find that traveler. From what they say about him, this seems like the kind Here of I am! Know. Ask and you shall receive, dude. Looking for me? Oh, you're the traveler, you say? Hmm. Rude? Hey, what's with that face? Don't believe us? If you don't believe me, I'll just go. No, no. Of course I believe you. Actually, I first heard about your great exploits when I was still in Inazuma. See, I really like when characters are, um... They talk about other regions and stuff. This is my first time coming Helps with the world face building. with you and your mysterious silver-haired companion. I couldn't believe my luck. And out of force of habit, I started... Uh... Examining the evidence. So, so what? For the love of... <laughs> Sorry, we don't get out much, so our social skills are kind of lacking. <laughs> it makes me laugh because it's just like, is Hoyo trying to call me out right now <laughs> uh traveler wow i hear you've helped many people a great deal and been to many places would you be able to tell us about tatarasuna 
I mean, I guess. Actually, we don't know much about that place either. In fact, we only came over here because we heard you talking about it and wanted to learn more. Ah, uh, uh, I see. Sorry I can't help this time. My teacher chose this area of research as a personal challenge. He said it's difficult to get into because even Inazumans don't know much about Tatara Suna's past. Uh -huh. But who'd have thought that... If you don't mind, I'd love to show you all my outline for the book I'm writing about Tatara Suna. I don't got that time, bro. Uh, hold on, Sawada. Don't you think that's a bit of a deep dive for a first read? Well, fair point. In that case, please ease yourselves in gently by taking a look at Akaba's latest essay draft. S? I don't got time to read some essays! Let me give you some background. This all started with the discovery of some records in Tatara Suna. Okay. The writings mentioned someone by the name of Mikoshi Nagamasa, who crafted a fine blade. But in the end, he threw it into a fire to destroy it and killed his servant Katsuragi. Why? Well, no one knows. Apart from the sword maker, his servant, and the one who wrote this all down, the records also mention a kabuki mono. Kabuki mono. This seems to be an Inazuman word for an eccentric stranger. Someone who dresses funny or acts in an unusual way. Ido? That's right. Akaba's teacher has spent quite some time researching these events on the ground. This kabuki mono lived in Tatara Suna for a while before disappearing without a trace. It's and not Ido, by the way. As Akaba mentioned, things got pretty ugly. So first this strange person goes missing, then a murder happens? Mm, seems kind of fishy to Paimon. Yeah, it's a little sus. Yes, my thoughts exactly. So I helped out too. I asked everyone I could think of if they knew anything about what happened back then. And wow, did I get lucky. Oh my God, this guy's going ham. Stop shouting. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, dude. Important. I just wanted to make it stand out. Okay, Ricky Gervais. It just so happens that a friend of mine works at the government records office. He looked into it for me, and I can now confirm that all the aforementioned individuals did, in fact, live in Inazuma over 400 years ago. Oh, okay. Even back then, Tatara Suna was already at the center of Inazuma's smelting industry. Hmm. The man in charge was a government official named Niwa. Niwa. Curiously enough, it seems like he went missing too. Could it be? Wait, so there are two missing people in the story now? That's right. What's more, Niwa is a name with a lot of history to it. Okay. Have you ever heard of the great swordsmith clans of Inazuma? Well, yes, I have. Yeah, um, like Ishin Art and so on? Wow, yes. You really know your stuff. That makes things easier. So basically, this Niwa was a distant relative of the Kaidahara clan, the last practitioners of Ishin art. Something then okay. seems to have happened in the Kaidahara clan, leading to their downfall. I don't know the details, but taken in light of everything else going on around that time, it makes you wonder whether it's all connected somehow. The Kaidahara clan? Sawada, you left out the biggest detail of all. There's more? Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? Brace your minds, ladies and gents. This guy's a good voice actor. Alone. Or maybe you won't believe your ears. I wouldn't blame you, of course, because okay, in all okay. my years as a writer, this is by far the most. Jesus, okay, okay. Get to the point, for Pete's sake. According to information acquired by Akaba's teacher, the Kabuki Mono was not a human, but a puppet. <laughs> Should that be my thumbnail face? What? Puppet? <gasps> a puppet? A shogun puppet that the Electro Archon made should be ruling Inazuma with her as we speak. It couldn't be her. Probably the Wanderer. The Kabuki Mono has to be the Balladeer. But what was he doing 400 years ago in Tadarasuna? That's actually kind of insane that he was there 400 years ago. Judging by the looks on your faces, you do know something after all. Chat, I just thought about something. What if at the end of Genshin Impact, like when, when the story comes to an end, Hoyo comes out of the shadows like this and it's like, get ready, gamers. Genshin Impact 2. 
you play as Lumine in her story. And then we get another 10 years of Genshin. <laughs> I don't know. That's sick. You glare at Paimon and hope she keeps her mouth shut. Uh, no. Paimon just meant... Uh, how creepy. Mm -hmm. The way you described it makes it sound like a ghost story. I agree. Good save, good save. It does. But considering that non-human races in Inazuma are by no means uncommon, spooky events are to be expected. And that's exactly what my book is about. Please, take a look. Bro, I'll read it some other time. I don't got time right now. Oh. Ah, I got Holy shit. You know, you know why this quest, you know why this quest is two and a half hours long? Two hours is this. <laughs> As someone who read it, I can say there was nothing important. Was there nothing important? Oh God, am I gonna read this for no reason? I would lightly skim. Okay, let's just lightly skim this thing. It was a dust, but it darkened. I don't I don't want to read this anymore. <laughs> and please that's too, read I'm sorry. Well. That's too much. I'm not a theory crafter. That's, that's way too. I'm sorry. That is way too much to read. It's too long. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's more. There's freaking more. Oh my god. Oh dude, I didn't. Okay, God, Jesus. You should skim this one. Okay, I'll 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 skim this one. All right. Oh god. The text belongs to a series of works sponsored by the Val. Uh, the Tadarusuna area has always been a major pillar of Inazuma smithing industry. Yes, two incidents have occurred here, and the details beyond the first are vague at best. I believe, however, that there is a hidden history behind events. Uh, data. Mm, let's see here. This paper continues and expanded the work of my mentor, Mr. Rooney, and his report on the happily hidden tales of Tadarasuna. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Inazuma were originally handed down from the Electro Archon, also known as the Raiden Shogun. Used her, using her arts, they inherited from their Archon. The people of Inazuma devoted themselves to the process of forging. However, strange rumors that did not quite fit the steely nature of metalwork yet linger about Tadarasuna which was the central pillar of the forging industry. There, the Mikoshi and Niwa clans, along with an eccentric puppet, serve as the three windows of insight we need to investigate the truth behind what happened. Uh, perhaps I overstepped, but I think that Sir uh, Nagamasa's moods grows better as a forged blades. Obsessing the clean stain in the name, Mikoshi must eat at him. Inspector bought a certain number of jade steel ingots. We at least made a single Nakami, we call it a Daitatara Nagamasa. The inspector was on high spirits. Uh, let's see, performed a sword dance with the wandering eccentric. The wandering eccentric, I'm guessing, is Skara. And we cannot find that eccentric. The inspector flew into a rage and slashed uh, Katsuragi. The great blade cut deep into the flesh, cast his own Nagamaki into the furnace's flame. Azumo could not abide by the order and drew the completely melted weapon out of the furnace. He was horribly burned. Nazumo, uh, Nazumu died that night. I dare say that while Sir Katsuragi may have committed his malfeasance, and, uh, is harsh but also knows right from wrong, but even so, he is not uh, amenable for two reason. His name indicates one obsessed with purity. Still, I and some households of Tadarasuma have not been blinded by the matter of Nagamasa's mother, Chiyo, and we trust him. Before we withdrew, we should have divided the arsenal key, prevent theft, but we were too much of a hurry. So I was bold. Okay. The seven notes mentioned prior have been scattered across Tadarasuna area. Among the seven notes, six seem to be of good physical integrity, though they all look quite old. Golden years. The contents of the first six should also be related to each other, as the incidents mentioned are quite uh, consistent with one another. Rumi once mentioned in Happily Hidden Tales of Tadarasuna, hereafter known as the Hidden Tales, that in the past, researchers from Sumeru had investigated the cultural history histories of Tadarasuna and Inazuma, though the place had fallen into some degree of despair since the Hidden Tales were written. Uh, Tadarasuna. The residents were questioned, told the researchers of Tadarasuna's golden age centuries ago when it was administered by Armory Officer Niwa. 
a great many of these rumors revolved around the yukai who are very uh so very charismatic or char characteristic characteristic of inazuma's folk i can't freaking read at this point dude the fact drew the attention oh my god this is so long dude a puppet did once appear in Tadarasuna. Its visage was elegant, its appeal impeccable, and the way it dressed hit all the joint lines on its body. If no one were to mention that it was indeed a puppet, it would be hard to tell at all. Additionally, this puppet seemed to possess special joint lines around that would fade with time, potentially even disappearing altogether, which would perhaps eventually make the puppet seem entirely human. The name of the puppet was known uh, to almost none. Some folk claimed to have spotted it appearing around Tadarasuna, while others mentioned encountering it in the central regions of the area. Some even claimed that it was frequent the beach, tail spread of it standing beside the sea and gazing across the waters toward Inazuma City. What it was, what it was that the puppet was gazing at remains a mystery. It's probably the wanderer gazing upon Raiden, right? His mom, his creator. As mentioned earlier, the six noted all documents a certain nameless eccentric. The eccentric, which can also be read as Kabuki Mono, is usually used in Inazuma to refer a figure who dresses or behaves in a peculiar manner. Understandable. Let's see here. Mm hmm. List of individuals related. Oh, gosh. Family following this incident. Uh. Ah, this is so... See, the rest of this paper remains unfinished. One thing's for sure, though. A lot uh, of thought was put into it. <sighs> the locals thought him their skills over time, showing him how to clean his attire, dance, and craft small trinkets. Records state that Kabuki Mono was there when the Daidara Nagamasa was forged. All right, I think I got the gist Sawada of it. Sawada was encouraging me to follow his more creative approach, but I think oh, this should be grounded in facts. A lot. I don't think explaining everything away with mysterious forces will cut it. Okay. Oh, how about if I plug the holes in Sawada's narrative with political intrigue? Like, um, I could put a turf war between rival factions at the center of the whole series of events. Uh-huh. Hey, you're allowed to just make stuff up. Pretty sure you've gone from essay to guess <laughs> You've gone from essay to guess I am using that as a line. Of, oh my god. Yeah, that sounds more like a novel. Akaba, look, your teacher has researched this extensively. Guess a, that's so funny, dude. Think of. Whatever information we have now. I feel like Paimon's writing is getting better and better. This is as much detail as you're ever going to get. Besides, if there really was a political power struggle going on at anything like the level you seem to be suggesting, what hope would we ever have of finding out the truth? I mean, I can probably find out the truth. Uh, good point. Okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Uh, give me some time. I, I need to find a new angle on this. I'll leave it to you. We have some other stuff to do. So I don't want to read anymore. For now. Good luck with your essay. All right, thank you. If you find out Bet. any more info about all this, I'm on a fire today, dude. Let me know. Thanks so much. All right, easy. This is the start, dude. Doro's a warrior, dude. I was, I was trying. I'm trying to do due diligence for you guys. It has to do with the balladeer, doesn't it? Sounds like it, yeah. Okay, then even if we did know something about it, we probably couldn't share it with them, huh? I wouldn't. No, that should be between you and me. I got him locked up. Information about people like that is usually super confidential, isn't it? Yes. If you ask Paimon, Akaba should just pick a different topic. There must be as many essay topics as there are trees in the forest. There's no point in. He's here. What? Hey, did you see that? He literally just went by over there. There he is! Huh? He isn't uh, walking what? around? No, it can't have been. He got locked up. Oh, quick, let's catch up and see. Simon, welcome and how are you? He's just he's just walking around. Traveler Paimon, there you are. Nahida, bad news. We just saw the balladeer strolling around in public. Did he escape or ah, it's him? <laughs> he's just standing there, dude. <laughs> Sure enough, you're here. 
I am so excited to hear more. I think it's Patrick Pedroza. I forget what his voice actor's name is. I, I apologize. I cannot wait to hear more of his voice acting because his voice acting is just top notch, dude. Top notch. Yeah. I know you must have a lot of questions. Please, allow me to explain. Why didn't you text us? It was my idea to set the Balladeer free. We made a deal, and he's going to do some investigation in Ermansoul for me. Okay. A deal? <laughs> you sure you trust this guy? What did you expect? Why do you think Sumeru would keep me around otherwise? Or maybe killing me is all you can think about. I'm sorry. But if that's the case, why haven't you done it already? Don't flatter yourself. It was... This <sighs> guy. There's still some mysteries in you to figure out. Ah, so if it were up to you, you'd finish the job? Guess I had you all wrong. There I was thinking you were just getting cold feet. Dude, his writing is so good. I'll finish. Escalated quickly. Not a good start. Could I ask you all to please calm down? Calm down? No! He tried killing us! But Paimon's worried about you, Nahida. Don't let him trick you. <laughs> it's not every day you see people questioning the God of Wisdom's judgment. Just when you think you've seen it all. Don't you dare try to drive a wedge between us! It, it feels like he, he is trying to drive a wedge and like kind of cause dismay. As long as the terms are reasonable, I don't think there's a problem in making a deal. Even with the Balladeer. I mean, she made a deal with the Tore, so she got no limits, dude. She's like, I'll make a deal with anybody if it's good enough. Well, I for one have no reason to doubt you. Considering you even struck a deal with a doctor. <laughs> Like I just said! <laughs> exactly! Yes, one in which I gained valuable information. You'll <laughs> I call it, dude. I'm a psychic. In the fullness of time. The Paladier's power was all but completely spent after your battle. He's no longer strong enough to be a strategic threat to us. That puts him in quite a precarious position. Plus, He's a former harbinger with knowledge of many of the Fatui's sensitive secrets. Mm -hmm. Being stuck here in Sumeru could make him a sitting duck, depending on how the Fatui plan to respond. That is true. Wait, Got a good point. Former? You mean, he's not a harbinger anymore? I take no pleasure in saying this, but it seems as if the doctor had no intention of welcoming back a loser, so... <laughs> Oh my god, not Nahida being like, yeah, the doctor didn't really want this loser over here. Like, loser over here. So he tossed you out like. <laughs> I didn't see the line. So he tossed you out like trash, dude. Sometimes it's you <laughs> using them, other times. It's them using you. I didn't see that. Most human relationships are this way. Certainly all the stable ones are. That's how it was between me and the Fatui. And also between each of the Harbingers. So it's like a dog eat dog. Like they don't really care for you type situation. So as long as you have some value to offer, nobody will ever abandon you. But after recent events, even I have to admit that I'm not worth quite what I used to be. Really? Oh, what a crying shame. Boo hoo. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> the writing in this quest is so good so far. <laughs> well, a crying shame. If we are going to evaluate my utility, I need to have a backup plan for myself. As we discussed, I don't like causing harm to living beings, and you said you need protection. So, why not join forces with us? I don't trust this. I think these two have made their objection to that idea fairly clear. Don't you? And they're your friends. So I guess you'll be siding with them. His voice actor is just so freaking good. Yeah, obviously. Nahida, don't listen to him. Then let's put that discussion to the side for now. We still have time. Okay. They can be a trial run. Where we go from here will depend on how well we manage to cooperate today. 
All right. Then I'll do what we agreed. Okay. Good. Go now and keep in touch. I don't trust this, bro. Nahida, are you uh, are you serious about this? Yes. Yeah. I have my reasons for this decision. In fact, I'm largely doing it for your benefit. For me? Yes. As I told you once before, there's information about your twin in Ermin's soul. Yes, yes, yes! Anything for that! Oh, yeah. Actually, that's the whole reason we came to see you today. So, you have an update on that? Mm-hmm. You may remember me mentioning that the Fatui had not included your twin's details in the Descender category. Right. This is an extremely important point. Okay. It's possible that the Fatui have other information that even I don't know about. And since the Balladeer used to be one of them, he'll be better acquainted with this information than I am. Okay. He was granted the power to connect with Erminsoul when he almost became the god of a new era. Mm. Even though he no longer has the Gnosis, some traces of its power remain in him. He can still connect. The amount of information okay. in Erminsoul is vast beyond description. Sifting through all of it without knowing what to look for would take too long, even for me. Sure. So I asked the Balladeer to search in Erminsoul for any information about the Descenders. He's more familiar with this kind of information and should be able to find it more quickly. Yeah, but what if he lies to you, though? Exactly! Or what if... You... Why am I just guessing trust him? <laughs> he's treated us as enemies every time we run into him! I mean, he's tried to kill us, so yeah. I understand. But kind of hard sometimes, to trust everything is dictated by which side you're on. How things will go in the future depends on what information he brings back. Mm -hmm. And Traveler, I know what your heart desires most of all. Our minds have connected several times before. There is a corner of your heart reserved for an intense longing. A feeling of being all alone in the dark. Searching for the one candle whose light still burns. This is already getting, like, we're already in this, dude. As Sumeru's deity, it is my responsibility to be on guard against the Balladeer. Mm -hmm. But as someone who counts you as a friend, I want to do something for you. If this deal with the Balladeer can give you the answers you've been longing to find, then it's worth it. Best Archon! I'm, uh, best Archon. Literally best Archon. Thank you, Nahida. It's my pleasure, really. You're Sumeru's hero. You've more than earned it. Hmm. I went still worried about this idea. Is there anything we can do to help? I was going to contact you about that, but then you suddenly showed up on your own accord. Destiny. It seems like we have a telepathic connection. Oh my god, we're empaths. <laughs> In fact, I was going to ask you to supervise the Balladeer on my behalf while he carries out the task I assigned. Supervise him? Oh god. Even though he only has a fraction of his full power left, that's still a fraction of a former harbinger. True. If you could accompany him, it would put my mind at ease. Yeah, but that doesn't put my mind... Okay. All right. Of course, I'll be there to help guide you through Ermansoul from the outside. All right, got it. Great. Thank you. Prepare yourselves. I'm going to transport you into Ermansoul. Yo, we're just going to Ermansoul right off the bat already, dude? Okay. It looks pretty different here compared to last time. Whoa. The colors are gentler. Guess that must be because Sumeru's at peace now. That's a good little touch. I love that, dude. Babysitting time? Oh, gosh. All right. Look at that. Hot on my heels. You know, you didn't have to cut your catch up short just to keep me company. Oh, but I guess you panicked when you realized that I might enter Ermin's soul ahead of you. What is your problem, bro? Shut your beak, jailbird. <laughs> no way a prisoner gets to be so smug. I understand that prisoners have to put up with harassment from the guards. But right now, I'm on temporary release. So maybe you should think about backing off a little. Dude. The writing, the voice acting. I'll take you on right now, Skara. I beat you once, I'll beat you again. Sounds like a successful rendezvous. Thanks, Nahida. <laughs> I need to be quite clear about something. 
In a few moments, you'll be entering into the innermost region of Ermensoul. So we're going in? It is an environment like no other, and the most important place in all of Sumeru. Unlike anywhere else, Ermensoul's inner region consists exclusively of torrents of information. You must put aside your differences and be extremely careful as you navigate your way through. Okay. I know I'm there excited. are differences between you on both sides, but it is essential that you remain calm after entry. Okay. This is as much for your own safety as anything else. All right, understood. Fine. Let's call it truce, but only until this mission's over. Let's cut each other a little slack, shall we? We are going to be traveling together after all. Per my agreement with Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'll be at the front. It's my job to lead the way and get rid of any obstacles in our path. All you have to do is keep your pretty eyes open and try not to fall behind. <laughs> you sure are confident. Paimon will give you that. You make it sound like you're even more experienced at adventuring than us. Yeah, I'm going to call the adventure for a reason. If there are no further objections... I suggest we get going. I like the long frilly thing on his hat. That's what or I like the most. Did you need some time to mentally prepare yourselves? Ew. The snark on this guy. Chat, I'm telling you, he's not in the mental health. Why are we simping over Skara? He is not he doesn't like mental health. There's no need for all this biting sarcasm. You but we can start now. Ermansol access grant. Initiating connection procedure. Okay. Oh, I'm excited. Is this a small sapling? I guess it's like a domain. Darn it. Come on, let's catch up with him. Let's do it. I'm excited, dude. Wow. So this is the inside of Ermansoul. It's different than what I imagined. Ooh. Whoa. I've never seen anything like this. And it feels like a sacred place. There's a tree within a tree. <laughs> this is cool. Herman's soul is closely intertwined with the entirety of Tavat. Mm -hmm. Every bit of information flowing here means something. Treeception, yeah. Pick your jaws up off the floor. It's time to go. Why is Does it he that Herman just wants to do the opposite of everything he says? <sighs> Lesser Lord Kusanali, we will now proceed to the heart of Herman's soul. Can you still sense where the heart of Herman's soul is? Yes. Permission to begin searching for information there? Permission granted. Go ahead. Let's go. Stay close. Don't go running off. And don't worry, I won't. Hey, so say we did go running off in here. What would happen? <laughs> well, <laughs> Not just a smoke it. At? I was just imagining the look on your travel companion's face if you went and got lost. Anything's possible in here. You can't rule anything out. So if you want to stay safe, your best option is Am I able to like to go off? Can I just like go off and do something? Chat, should we try going off and doing something? Can we? I don't know. I kinda want to. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Aw, oh, you can't. Alright. Dang it, I thought we could. <laughs> Those are all packets of information from inside Ermansoul. Be careful not to touch them. Oh, okay. Don't touch the the branches. Oh, so we can't touch the branches. Oh, my B. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to touch them. It looks the same in every direction. What is going on? I'm not what touching them. Oh, it's supposed to happen. What do you know? He was actually telling the truth. Okay, that was supposed to. I thought that wasn't supposed to happen. I was so confused. What is it this time? There's a time and a place to lie, but this definitely isn't it. So why don't you relax your guard a little? Dude, this place is gorgeous. We're here. Dude, that's awesome. This is the center of Ermansoul. All the information in the world is flowing through it. Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good, you made it. 
Are you ready? Are we about to get like a huge like lore dump or something? Ready when you are. Then please begin. Preparing to access cognitive currents. Establishing waypoint. The balladeer is actually doing what Nahida tells him. Guess he must want to stay alive. I'm on shush it. He hasn't put up any resistance. And he seems good at working on the front line. Maybe he had a similar role in the Fatui? First, Akaba and Sawada stories. Now this. What a strange individual. The rest is up to you. If you discover anything at all, make sure to share it with us. Will do. Huh. Huh. For once, we're the ones with nothing to do. <laughs> Traveler, Paimon, would you like to talk? <gasps> Give me the tea, bestie. Nahida? Is this a telepathic conversation? Yes. I've also invited Paimon to join. Oh, we had a group chat going. <laughs> Without Skara. I'm guessing that you don't want to disturb the balladeer. <laughs> That's part of it. Plus, we're all friends. There's nothing wrong with us talking like this once in a while. This is... <laughs> that is literally a group chat that a group of friends make, but then exclude a person from their... <laughs> That's so funny. That's good. So balladeer is the least liked of the group, I guess. That's so funny. <laughs> Balladeer's a bit of a walking contradiction. He's always talking back, but he seems to listen to what you say. Yeah, and he seems to excel at doing odd jobs for others. As I've told you before, there are still some mysteries for him to resolve. Things that are clear as day to me, but that he has yet to understand. Perhaps today will be the day that he finds some answers. I hope. Is it about his past, the betrayals, and the other events in Inazuma? Well done. Smart and attentive as always. I got you. Actually, I caught a glimpse of a few things when I ran into Hypatia at Pardasdia. You relate what you saw in the Balladeer's mind while in Pardasdia. So, you made contact with that part of his mind. Yeah, that well, sad scene. It's true. Betrayal turned the Paladir into the person he is today. The sad backstory. Huh. Paimon thought nothing could get under that guy's skin. Turns out, he can get hurt and angry just like anyone else. Everyone has a history, Paimon. Even if you're a puppet created by the Electro Archon. Speaking of puppets, we ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out, their topic was about the Tatara Suna incident. Nahida, do you know anything about that? If you mean the mysterious events, the Kabuki Mono and so on? Yeah, that's a huge yes. thing. I know about all of that. Really? Because from what they were saying, it sounded like lots of Tatara Suna's history is still unexplained. Mm -hmm. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. You tell Nahida about the story Akaba and Sawada are writing. Oh, how interesting. Those two managed to deduce quite a lot through guesswork alone. So they were like, they're accurate? That's actually kind of funny. So the guess they got it right? Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatara Suna was sabotaged. Must be a riveting conversation you three are having. Funny how all the good ones happen when I'm not involved. That's awkward, dude. Uh, uh, what makes you think we're talking to each other? Yeah. <laughs> Don't insult me. You're having a private conversation without me. Obviously, I must be the topic of said conversation. That's embarrassing for me, for us. Of course you do. You can't have your prisoner knowing too much. Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, have you found anything yet? Still looking. Don't get your hopes up, though. You and your twin come from outside this world. It wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing on either of you in Ermensoul at all. Wait, how did you know 
about that. Didn't Nahida tell you? It's not like we've never met before. And anyway, you're world famous. It'd be more surprising if I didn't know a few things about you. I'm Mr. Worldwide. Every conversation with you is hard work, but your attitude is better than I thought. Right now, we have to keep the peace. I'm not interested in creating more misery for myself. And making cordial conversation is something I can manage. Huh? Wait. This light. It looks similar to those saplings. What could it be? Anonymous data. Hey, don't you forget the agreement. You have to share it with us. Shh. Just wait. Okay. Wait, were we about to get some, like, lore dump, dude? Mr. Niwa, are you certain this is worth the risk? We are talking about Tatara soon as Furnace, after all. It may not pay to act rashly. There's no one else who can enter the Furnace. It has to be me. Is that so? <sighs> well, since you insist. <gasps> it's... That name. Niwa was the man in charge at Tatarasuna. Plus, he belongs to the lineage of Ishin Art. Whoa! <laughs> God dang it, Paimon. I have been in Tatara Suna for some time now. You have shown me great hospitality, as has Mikoshi Nagamasa, and indeed, everyone else. Are we actually here now, dude? Under your leadership, Tatara Suna is a warm, welcoming place, like a giant village. People are gainfully employed. Their lives have purpose. They are motivated. As I understand, the Raiden Shogun has, in recent years, eliminated much of the evil that plagued Inazuma. As for Tatara Suna, it was originally established as a means of safely disposing Crystal Marrow. The forging industry with Crystal Marrow as a raw material has since flourished, giving rise to generations of swordsmiths. Some world-renowned, Others, unknown. All passing on their legacy. Skills, blood, dreams. Every smith brought into this trade looks to find their purpose between steel and blade. That is why you accepted the proposal brought to you by myself and Akame. Yes, well, were it not for you coming to Inazuma and happening to make Akame's acquaintance, the two of you never would have joined forces. And he would be the first to admit that there's no way he could have revolutionized our forging process like this on his own. At least not on the same timescale. Okay. You allowed Akame to take all the credit for a method that you jointly developed. He sold it to me. And now, every piece of ore here is smelted using the new technique. Even now, you remain one of Tatara Suna's key consultants, working right here alongside us. I believe it is you, sir, who are truly responsible for the changes in our manufacturing and forging methods. Hmm. <laughs> you flatter me. From the Asher. outset, I saw much that was commendable in the forging industry of Inazuma. And it has been my great honor to befriend you all. So you say, Asher. But is this really the truth? My good sir, what do you mean? What's going on? I tried to resist thinking it was all connected, because I didn't want to speculate, and I didn't want to believe that things could turn out this way. What have we gained from adopting your new technology? Ominous black smoke? Mounting production problems? Worker fatigue and casualties are up and continuing to rise at an alarming rate. Hmm. And recently, as you well know, someone died because of that strange filth inside the furnace. We've kept the truth from spreading outside, but still. I suspect you understand it better than I do. None of the people who went out to get help have come back. Now, our mutual friend, the Kabuki Mono, is taking the Golden Feather to Narukami Island to seek an audience with Shogun. This is our last hope, but that doesn't phase you, does it, Escher? Nothing does. Otherwise, why would you still be standing there with that smile on your face? My man is sussy, dude. He's just like, 
You figured out my plan, have you? <laughs> I'm just surprised that you finally chose to be so sincere. I'm sure you've been harboring these suspicions for quite some time. <laughs> Mikoshi Nagamasa may have noticed that there was one common denominator among all these events. Namely you, Escher. But Mr. Mikoshi is more cautious than I. He does things by the book. After all, Nagamasa is the adopted son of Mikoshi Torichio, the yokai struck down by the Shogun's own hand. If he truly seeks to redeem his family's honor, an abundance of caution is well advised. You're well informed on the subtleties of his situation for a mechanic all the way from Fontaine. Are you sure you're not a little overqualified? Why, Mr. Niwa, are you suggesting I find a job as a diplomat? Sadly, I am so very attached to my craft. I don't trust anyone from Fontaine, bro. Enough, Escher. I'm here because an evil force is raging inside the furnace. And someone needs to take your new device inside the high-risk zone so we can absorb it and put an end to the problem. I'm in charge here. And I'm about to take some responsibility and head inside. Probably to my death. But what about you? What are you still doing here? I like this new thing that they've been doing where like when they zoom in on a character's face and it just goes... Like the eyes just... <laughs> I always think that's so funny, dude. Judging from the look in your eyes, you don't seem to trust me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this is a serious moment, but I did not expect the camera to turn. And he's just like. <laughs> just right in my face, bro. <laughs> it was just. So you don't trust me. Hmm. It was just too close, bro. Drop the act. We're past that now. Whoever you are, it looks like your plan to destroy Tatara Suna has worked. I don't trust people from Fontaine. I do not, bro. I just want to know what you're still doing here. What's left? He's going to stab him. You have all your answers by now. He's going to stab him. Honestly, I'm just waiting for the right moment. A moment like this, where you finish talking and I stop you from entering the furnace. <sighs> you... You... <sighs> You're a little smarter than I initially gave you credit for. Dude, the story in Genshin just gets better and better, man. I thought I'd disguise myself exceptionally well. At least for the first few days. But to my surprise, you had your people look into my background right from the start. It's a long journey from Inazuma to Fontaine, but that didn't stop them. Eventually, they managed to confirm that Escher was an alias, and that I was not from Fontaine at all. And yet, despite all of that, you still fail to realize my true identity. And what I seek in Tatara Suna. Did you really think you would be able to see through my plan? <laughs> if you kill me, there's no one who can get inside the furnace. That's the so story! Are going to destroy this place? Is that it? Oh, but you're quite wrong. There is one other person. Mm, some may not see him as a person, but you told him yourself. You're not a puppet. You're a human. You're just missing a heart. God, what a good voice actor. Whoever you're working for won't get away with this. They'll be found out. But this makes no sense. What are you really trying to accomplish by all this? Why go to all this trouble? It's no trouble at all. Patience is a virtue which I have in abundance. This is all part of a carefully controlled experiment. Dude, this is awesome. If you must know, I'm happy to divulge my true identity. 
I'm a Fatui Harbinger. Call me the Doctor. Oh, dude, he's such a good voice actor, bro. The Fatui? Who? What do you want? Just to create a minor inconvenience for your nation. For your nation? Just a minor inconvenience. You know, nothing that important. That's it. That's why you gave us your cursed technology? Just to let loose the evil energy from the crystal marrow? Wow. <laughs> Look how even the righteous soul is filled with venom when faced with its demise. My device functions precisely as you say. It is the only chance you have of preventing a catastrophe and keeping the truth from the outside world. However, I did not make it with you in mind. It is easier for a person to be possessed by evil spirits when they are filled with hate. So give in to your fury. I want to see what happens when a malevolent heart is placed into an unsuspecting puppet. Make no mistake, even without you, that pure, innocent puppet would only end up being used by someone else instead. What other reason would a human have for befriending one who is not of our kind? I could just see him being like, rips off his goatee, like, whoosh, takes off his hair. Whoosh, I'm the doctor. <laughs> Puts on his mask. Oh, you never saw it coming. My heart. Tell him that both Nagamasa and I see him as one of us. He has nothing to prove to anyone. Because not everyone just wants to use other people. The only ones who think like that. People like you. This is a. This is a free to play game. This is a free to play game. What a beautiful way to see the world. It almost makes me feel a little guilty. Hmm. Then, out of respect for you, I shall redefine myself. Think of me as a monster or a demon, if you wish. At least this way your death is not a consequence of your own folly turning you into an easy target. You simply lost to something more powerful than you could ever hope to defeat. What the heck? I say, Mr. Niwa, let's see what happens. Will your puppet friend become a human? No, that will prove quite impossible. Mr. Niwa? Already dead. What a pity. <sighs> Eureka, welcome in. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah, he can shape shift. That's insane. This he can shape shift. What else can he do? Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. Creating a gap and infiltrating Inazuma's inner workings. <laughs> What fun it was. How long have the Fatui been around for? I'd like to introduce a puppet to you. If he proves useful, let's make him our newest comrade. And if not, let's turn him to dust. <laughs> hey, are you all right? Dottore. <laughs> Dottore! I'm getting chills, bro. Good. Good. Was that the doctor? Did he turn into a mechanic from Fontaine? I'm afraid so. But why did we see things from his perspective? When I touched the doctor to confirm whether he'd eliminated all his segments, 
I read this memory in his mind. You have to admit, it must be the truth. Maybe so, but it means nothing. Does it? But this memory shows that Niwa didn't betray you. He never meant for you to be the one to take the device into the furnace. You know very well what that means. Even more so than I. <sighs> this betrayal was a lie that he had believed for hundreds of years. Was this part of the doctor's experiment? If the betrayal never had happened, it existed only in his imagination. But where does this leave him? Let's give him some space. Yeah, that sounds like Luke's a good idea. Really mad. Paimon doesn't want to be anywhere near him right now. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's go over there. I need to give him some time to process his emotions. Bro, this is crazy. I'm still confused about the Tatara Suna incident. So the doctor was behind it, but why has that gotten him so worked up? Nobody has ever deceived you like that, Paimon. Right. It's natural that you find it difficult to understand. Perhaps he needed to learn this someday. So now you have the complete picture. Katsuragi took the Kabuki Mono to live with the people of Tatarasuna. Later, the doctor showed up disguised as a mechanic from Frontine. And that's when the trouble began. Whoa. It was all a horrific experiment planned by the doctor. Everything he did was just to plant seeds of disaster in Inazuma that would bear fruit in the future. That is insane, dude. That is insane. Of all the unwitting participants in the doctor's experiment, the balladeer became the main test subject. After the events you just saw in that memory, the doctor put Niwa's heart into the device and handed it to the balladeer. Then he instructed him to enter the furnace and absorb all the filth caused by the smelting process. The load was far beyond what he expected, but the balladeer survived. He left the furnace in sheer exhaustion and said to the mechanic, This device seems to have protected me. What's in it? The mechanic answered, Niwa fled this place for fear of punishment, but he left you a gift. He said it's the one thing that you've been looking for. He took it straight from the chest of one of his innocent servants. The mechanic removed the withered heart from the device as he spoke. The balladeer was stunned that such unthinkable cruelty had brought him the thing he'd been longing for his entire life. A heart acquired through cold-blooded murder is a cursed thing, but it has protected him from the filth. This is... this is crazy! He thought Niwa had completely betrayed him, and yet this very betrayal had ensured his survival. Overwhelmed with anger and sorrow, the balladeer threw the heart to the ground and left Tatarasuna without looking back. Holy moly! So the doctor killed an innocent man and pinned everything on the victim? That's terrible! That's... wow. Being betrayed and abandoned by a close friend is sure to cause great resentment. Now we know what was behind his decision to take revenge on the Raiden Gokuden a hundred years ago. But it doesn't mean that vengeance was the right decision. Yes. Only if he understands this can he choose a new path forward. Wow. Yeah. Detori, you brazen face. <clears throat> Niwa didn't run from justice. You killed him. Shall we see how he's doing? Yes. Hey, you alright? <laughs> you good, dude? You... Um, why is he smiling? That's a scary expression. Are you worried about me? If we didn't have such a history, I'd almost think that qualifies me to be your friend. I mean, we can be friends. We just want to make sure this doesn't affect the plan. It won't. I'll keep my end of the deal. <sighs> hey, are you investigating the stuff we want to know about? That's why we're here. Am I about to figure out more stuff? But unfortunately, there's Dang no it. information about the Descenders in Ermansoul. No! Even if you can't find anything, that seems to confirm it. Ermansoul does not keep records on the Descenders. 
Anyone who comes from beyond this world is not counted as part of Tavat. Oh, does that mean we have to leave empty-handed? I mean, I guess. <sighs> not unexpected, but still. Thank you. Don't thank me just yet. Hmm, you look really upset. <laughs> well, since Ermin's soul was a dead end, I guess I can share some other info that might interest you. Yeah. Yes, you, you can. You can. Huh? About what? The reason why there are records about your sister and Ermin's soul. It might have something to do with Conria. Apparently, Conria was her first destination when she arrived in this world. Okay. Plus, she only came to this world because the heavens responded to the summoning. Summoning? Wait, 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 what? Heavens responded to the summoning? As in like they summoned her from the heavens? Like, what? So then who summoned her? Who, what? The heavens responded? From what I remember when you pick your character, that adult Paimon looking god, well, no, they only did that to us. They only did that to us and then we got put away somewhere. They didn't do it to both of us though, right? So then who summoned Lumine? What? The Jester told me this himself. You can take his word on this. He was a royal mage in Conria. Okay. And lived with your sister for a time. Lived? Another Fatui Harbinger. Is the Jester going to be the next Harbinger that we, like, meet then? I don't know the details. It's up to you whether you want to believe me. All I can say is, I wouldn't lie to you about this. Did you get all that, Lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes. Astonishing news. Does this info count towards my mission? It wasn't for Merman Soul, but was it valuable? Yeah, you just blew my mind. <laughs> for real. Very valuable. Why are you smiling like I, that's sussy, dude? That's so sussy. Good. In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Huh? What have you done? What's happening? Lesser Lord Kusanali was right. My power's all but completely spent. Even if I use all of the divine power left in me, I can't sustain this shield for very long. Okay. I shared a secret with you. And now you owe me. So in return, I'd like you to answer a question for me. Okay, what do you want to know? Give me your hand. That's not a, that's a, that's a command, but okay. Can you hear my voice inside your head? What is going on? Are you trying to brainwash me? No. I can't do anything like that anymore. At most, all I can do is exchange a few words with you. Okay. So tell me, in this world, is it possible to change the past? Wait, why would you ask that? Done. Huh? What the? What happened? I not only saw you hold hands for a second. Is that like a trigger word for us? Nothing. I was just thanking him for helping me. Wait, that look. Did he see me hesitate? But that was because I don't know about greater. But that was because I know about later greater Lord Ruka Nevada. Oh my God, this is crazy. I think by so long. I, I was just. I suggest you get yourselves out of here quickly. No, I was reading that. I, I didn't skip it. I didn't skip it. Oh my God. What did it say? God dang it. Where are you going? Hey, wait up. Didn't you say not to go running off? I don't know what he said. I guess maybe what he said was by me deny not denying it, like he got the answer that he wanted of like, oh, you can't change the past. Valadir, stop. Fast reaction time, but I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. Don't bet on it, bet on it, bet on it, bet on it. From this day forth, 
the names Baladir and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. Okay. Those who died in Tatarasuna because of me deserve another chance at life. Hey, Baladir, don't do anything stupid. You know, I never did like insects. Hordes of the puny things swarming together can be a real nuisance. And I enjoy nothing more than to stamp them out like the pests they are. But if a colony of harmless ants isn't threatening anyone, I guess they deserve to be left alone. Luckily, everything can be set right. It's time to solve this once and for all. Baladir! What's Baladir! going on? Uh-oh, he disappeared. Come on, we gotta find him somehow. All right. We didn't even look. Oh no, he's really gone. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Nahida! Traveler, Paimon, Paladir, what happened just now? I was suddenly cut off by some kind of power. It was the Paladir's fault. He, he shut you out. Dude, this is getting good. You tell Nahida everything that happened. He'd be capable of something like that with so little power left. Well, he was. Did he keep some of his power hidden when he was defeated? Or did he achieve something beyond his abilities and it took everything he had? Where the heck did he go? Oh, it's all our fault. We were supposed to keep an eye on him. Sorry, Nahida. I mean, I didn't expect him to do that, though. It's not your fault. Please, let me handle this from here. Even though, I'm not sure I can solve it. We're running out of time. Follow my lead and get out of Ermansoul as soon as possible. But Okay. Dude, this is getting wild, man. This is good so far. This is an emergency. I'll have to ask you to stay here for now. Okay. Everything's arranged, and nobody will disturb you. I'm sorry, but this isn't something I need your help with. Leave this one to me. An emergency? How bad is it? Nahida, will you be okay? Don't worry. If my assessment is correct, though there may be some minor disturbances, it won't lead to a disaster. Please rest and recover your strength here until I say it's safe. Okay, that sounds so sussy, the but I'll, I'll listen. Paimon can't shake the feeling that something really big has happened. What do you think the Balladeer meant? And why did he suddenly grab onto you before? Paimon doesn't remember Greater Lord Rukudavada, and the Balladeer's question was a strange one. It's hard to explain it in full, and the truth might be very distressing for Paimon. I'll skip the part about Greater Lord Rukadabada for now and focus on the Balladeer. I'll lie to Paimon. You tell Paimon what the Balladeer asked you. He wants to change the past? But surely that's impossible. It's not easy, that's for sure. Right. You can't just rewrite history. All that stuff happened already in real life. Yeah. You can't do any of that. It's like, um, imagine Paimon drank all the water in this inn. Even if no one was there to see it, Paimon would sure as heck remember drinking it. Good example. Hmm. So, why does Paimon still have a bad feeling about this? Paimon can't help but feel scared about what he might do. Ooh. Paimon's so confused. Maybe he wants to erase himself from history. Huh? Ah! That's going to cost us so much. Are you okay? Sorry. Hey, that's what my mom would say. You have not called me in 10 days. You are causing me all this stress. I am sick because of you now because you do not call me. It's your fault. I'm like, mom, I've been busy. But erasing yourself from history? It's unthinkable. Is that really possible in Ermansoul? Oh. Oh, I cracked my back. That felt good. Uh, not necessarily, but maybe. And it's still not working. 
Yeah, I wonder how th this is gonna like play out. Indeed, if the battle deer doesn't er uh, does erase himself from Ermin's soul, many people in Inazuma will be affected. I can't imagine what the situation would look like. It'd be like no way home. Worst case scenario, it will affect everyone with a connection to the right in Gokuden. Kazuha, Ayaka, Ayato. Will this mean that they'll disappear? There's nothing we can do about imagine it they took point. away five stars. <laughs> Have you had any ideas on what we should do next? Seems like now there's nothing left for us to do but to go to sleep. But Paimon's still so worried. Paimon won't be C6 Cosmo? Gone. Me neither. So, how about uh, we list all our favorite foods to take our mind off things? <laughs> Heck, if that doesn't work, Paimon's probably going to collapse of anxiety here. All right, Paimon will start. First oh my dish. gosh. Okay, whatever. Mm. Whatever comforts her. Grilled fish. Oh, and chicken mushroom skewers. Tea break pancakes. Cream stew. Sauteed matsutake. As you keep talking about food. Hold on. I just had a thought. Um, so the doctor can shapeshift. We now know this. Who else has he shapeshifted into that we may have had contact with? And we never knew. Andrei and chili chicken, almond tofu, satisfying salad. Oh Lord, she keeps oh, going. Oh, also adeptus temptation, golden shrimp balls, triple layered consomme, lotus seed and bird egg soup, and. What's going on? Um. Um. What the? Uh, hmm. What's wrong? Uh, what are we... What was Paimon supposed to be doing just now? Paimon was... Um... Talking? Huh. Paimon suddenly can't remember what she was talking about. You were listing foods. Hmm? The Balladeer? Is that a food too? Huh. Weird name though. No way! Oh my god. Ah! Oh no! Paimon does remember the balladeer? That has. He actually pulled it off, dude. But how did he even have the ability? That doesn't make sense. What's wrong? Your eyes are like saucers. Was it the music is so good, that? too. No, it's nothing. It's nothing. So, the balladeer. Nickname or something. Uh, I misspoke. I meant to say John Deere, the mower. I need one. If this is really happening, I need to know what else has changed. Paimon, come with me. Hmm? Okay, sure. Where are we going? Uh, we gotta go back to Inazuma. Everything okay? You're acting like this is an emergency. I can't explain it right now. We made it to Amanoma Smithy. Ah, it's been a while. Pardon me. I'd like to ask you a question, if I may. Of course. Go ahead. About the Raiden Gokuden. Oh. <laughs> now there's a question I wasn't expecting. <sighs> Very well. I'll tell you what I know once more. The once-renowned Raiden Gokuden, comprised of five branches. Aminoma, Futsu, Ishin, Hyakume, and Senju. The art of forging practiced by these five clans was first taught to them personally by the almighty Shogun. Over time, the five branches diverged from one another as generations of bladesmiths Honed and perfected their craft until they became five distinct traditions. Most of the great swordsmith clans of old have since fallen into decline. And for a long time, 
Only the Amenoma branch kept its heart alive. But fortunately, Kaede Harakazuha recently returned to Inazuma and took up the mantle of the Ishin art. Now, two clans remain of the original Gokuden Five. If my memory serves me right, okay. you yourself were present when he forged the Ishin blade. Oh, yeah, we were! I do remember that. Kaima remembers that now! Is this why you have to do Kazuo's story quest before you can even attempt the Archon quest? We learned a bit about the decline of the Raiden Gokuden then, too. It seems like such a shame. What was the reason behind their decline? <sighs> that, my friends, is a tragic tale indeed. In fact, this was not made known to me for most of my life. All these years, I knew of those great clans' demise, but never the cause. <sighs> Only recently, when the question was on my mind, did I ask Kaedehara Kazuha about this. He told me that, as we are both heirs to a branch of the Raiden Gokuden, it was right that I should know the truth. There is no harm in telling you. But I must warn you, it is a dark and sorrowful tale. The Raiden Gokuden were the targets of a murderous rampage by a vengeful bladesmith. Vengeful? Why? Four hundred years ago, so I'm told, there was a catastrophic malfunction in Tatarasuna's furnace. Mm -hmm. One brave swordsmith heard the commotion and chose not to flee. But he rushed to the scene, hoping to prevent a disaster. Tatarasuna was home to a state-of-the-art forging and smelting operation in that day. And overseeing it was the armory officer. His surname was Niwa, though he had family ties to the Kaedehara clan, knowing that they had just one chance to save countless lives. Mr. Niwa and the swordsmith leaped together into the furnace. The furnace quickly stabilized, but... Neither of them made it out. The smith's death, though heroic, dealt a devastating blow to his family's fortunes. Mm -hmm. His orphan son was left to fend for himself and grew up deeply resentful at the world. In his heart, the whole of Inazuma was culpable in his tragedy. He hated the almighty Shogun for her apparent indifference towards his father's death, and he hated everyone who had done nothing to try and save him. Powerless and destitute, the only legacy he had to pass on to his children was his hatred. Generation after generation bore this grudge, living in utter misery. Alas, if only the story could have ended there. But 100 years ago, the then head of this family reached the end of his wits. He could bear their fate no longer, and yet... He could do nothing to change it. Finally, he made a drastic decision to take revenge on the ride in Gokuden. In doing so, he sought to vent his pet up anger and shake the very foundations of Inazuma's forging industry. In his fury, he murdered indiscriminately, killing even bladesmiths from the Hyakume clan, which he belonged Whoa. to. His goal was absolute. The devastation of all of the Raiden Gokuden. But when he came to the Kaedehara and Kamisato clans, his killing spree came to an abrupt end. He failed to catch them unawares. They fought back fiercely, and they did not spare his life. That is why the Kaedehara clan and their Ishin art survived that day. Huh. I suppose they were the lucky ones, under the dire circumstances. The legend of the Raiden Gokunen has changed. Someone else attacked the swordsmiths. It looks like the balladeer did something in Ermansol, but it seems Niwa still died. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Have you seen Kazuha recently? Kazuha? Why, yes. Just yesterday, in fact. We spoke for a while over some tea. He seemed well. Okay, so he still exists. Thank God. Imagine they were just like, we're pulling Kazuha, one of the best animals out of the game. Uh, he still exists, and he's the same Kazuha I know. Things don't seem as bad as I feared last night. All right, that's all. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Don't tell Paimon. There are other places 
places you want to visit too, right? <laughs> Your expression says it all. You can't hide anything from Paimon. Are you Dottore? On to the next stop. Lead the way, traveler. Paimon will be right behind you. We're here. Um, this is the Yashiro Commission's headquarters, so... Traveler, it's been a while. I did not expect that voice from this man. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I did not expect him to sound like that. Are we here to see Ayato? If you're looking for the commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I'm afraid your timing is unfortunate. They're not here right now. Don't you know? <laughs> I'm not making fun of the voice actor. I just did not expect him to sound like he's from Minnesota. Are they out on business? The commissioner is out on business. <laughs> he's Ned Flanders, dude. Kamisato is standing in for some meetings in the commissioner's place. If it's urgent, you're welcome to wait inside until they get back. What do you think? That's so Shall funny. we go in? Thank you. We'll take uh, you up on that offer. Can we walk into the courtyard? If it were anyone else, I couldn't allow it. But seeing as you're so close with the commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I think it should be okay. We'll be heading in then. Thanks. What a nice guy. Hmm? Hello, dear. At least she sounds like Is what I thought she would sound like. You want to say, ma'am? Can I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> of course, traveler. Yes, I know who you are. Miss Kamisato has told me about you. What would you like to know? How are the commissioner and Miss Kamisato these days? Oh, they're both very well indeed. Lately, Miss Kamisato has been rather busy attending all kinds of meetings and occasionally paying visits to some local organizations on the commissioner's behalf. All right, old lady, the future is now. Let's move it. As for the commissioner himself, well, you know, busy as ever. That much hasn't changed. Although, he does seem to be in a rather good mood these days. That's good. So what are the grandmas that tore Business as usual on the Yashiro Commission, huh? Very much so. Ayato is still the Yashiro Commissioner. Ayaka is still the Lady of the House. No changes there. But imagine they're not brother and sister anymore. As far as I can see, nothing's changed in the Yashiro Commission either. I was expecting as much, but it's still a big relief to know that the Kamisato siblings are both safe and well. Well, got any more questions? That's all for now. Many thanks. You're very welcome. In fact, I would Imagine love Alabama. more than for you to come and visit more often. But I'm sure you must be far too busy to have time for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm good to go. I gotta go. Miss Kamisato talks about you all the time. She is my first girlfriend. She seems so thrilled to have you as a friend. And she's always saying how talented you are and how much she admires you. I must say, many things in Inazuma seem to have taken a turn for the better since you arrived here. So you're not just Miss Toma's a new show, knight in shining armor, you know. You're a hero to us all. I'm flattered, thank you. Oh, I mean it. Okay, Granny, I'm taken. Whenever the commissioner dines at home, Toma always Toma! joins him. I always find myself at my most relaxed when I'm serving the two of them and listening to them chat away. She's a good voice actress, though. I will say that. The commissioner has such a busy schedule that this is why the quest is three hours long, though. To take his meals at home, but given the opportunity, he always prefers to dine here. They say it's because Toma's a much better chef than All right, most. Grandma, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, the commissioner is so fond of home Yeah, comforts. yeah, yeah, that's great. Go go back to sleep, Grandma. They get oh, to God. talking about you sometimes, too, you know. Always with a very fond tone. 
the way one would talk about dear old friends around whom one can truly be themselves. Yeah. Miss Kamisato occasionally joins them as well. Whenever the whole family gets together, <laughs> they start talking about people they've met and experiences <laughs> they've had. You always get a mention. It's been <laughs> many years now since the late Mr. and Mrs. Kamisato passed away. Much has happened in the Kamisato clan in that time. As someone who is old and gray enough to have watched their son and daughter grow up, it makes me so happy to see them meet a dependable friend whose company they enjoy so much. So, in the future, if you ever... I could have read that essay time, and that book faster than this. You are always very welcome at the Yashiro Commission. Thank you. You have orders. said the same thing at three different times, three different ways, lady, for the last 40 minutes. Delighted to have the pleasure of your company. Dang, she's into us, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm taken. Uh, thank you very much. I will visit again. I will. Wonderful. <laughs> well, I will thank not. Thank you. Paimon likes it here, too. Paimon, shut up. We're out of here. You were saying something about the food here. No, Paimon! Paimon's itching to try it. We may just have to invite ourselves around for dinner sometime. Uh, uh, Paimon meant we should come pay a visit again real soon. Ideally around dinner time. <laughs> no. <laughs> of course. You're always welcome. All right. Goodbye for now. We're, uh... Where are we going now? Tadarasuna. Great. Goodbye, ma'am. Don't worry. We'll see ourselves out. All right, then. Take care now. Hope to see you soon. You won't. Hey, I'm out. Let's go. Shove Granny oh, aside. Are you two leaving already? Oh, God. It's Ted from Chicago. Yep. Everything's taken care of now. Don't worry. Very well. Safe travels. Goodbye. Well, here we are. But... What are we looking for? Something or someone? Do my eyes deceive me, or is that the Traveler and Paimon? Xavier, what are you doing here? Xavier? Oh, I was saying that completely wrong. I was in the general area, and now I'm in this specific area. There, that's me. So what about you two? We had some questions and thought you might be able to help. Uh, do you know much about Tadarasuna? Certainly do. I've researched the furnace here in some depth. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. How well do you understand the history of this area? Like the back of my hand. <laughs> Make no mistake, I have been here a good many times before. Not only that, but I've met people in Inazuma whose families used to live in Tatarasuna years ago. They said it's all true, the history here. Go on, Xavier. I'm listening. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, it's a long story. Don't you know? The tale of Tatarasuna starts a long time ago. Maybe it's the Tori in disguise. I'm told that its history is one of the most foremost forging and smelting operations in the nation. Goes back around a thousand years. Still, the furnace has had a couple of serious maintenance issues along the way. A couple? When exactly? One was just in the last few years. The other was several hundred years ago. A fun fact, I'm not the first Fontaine tech guy to come and work on it either. There was a guy back then too. What if he is though? Because he, what uh, Caleb said, he sounds like the Torre a little bit. And we know he's from Fontaine, right? But, like, for him to just now say, yeah, hundreds of years ago, fun fact, but I'm not the first Fontaine Tech guy to come and work on. Either right, there was a guy back then, too. Could be Dottori in the skies. He doesn't sound like Dottori at all. <laughs> Lon, don't you have a dog to go take care of? They say he was a mechanic who consulted oh, he sounds on a, a little technology bit like him. upgrade. It seems like the technological collaboration between our two nations more light a long way. How about that? Mechanic, huh? Looks like the doctor still sabotaged the furnace, leading to all ensuing chaos. Hey, weren't you gonna ask Xavier something about 
up to Tarasuna? Come on, ask already. I am. Oh, I didn't realize you two were here for a history lesson. Me neither. Paimon doesn't know what's gotten into this one today. Feels like we've been preparing for a history exam or something. Hmm? What brought this on? Did you just wake up today with a sudden burning desire for historical knowledge? Wouldn't you like to know? Pretty much. So can I ask one more question? Sure. Go ahead. Have you ever heard of Kabuki Mono connected to Tadarasuna? A Kabuki Mono? Hmm. No, I can't say that I have. I do know the word, Inazuman, for those eccentric types who always go around dressed to the nines. Just the sort of person that I'd like to meet, actually. But sadly, I've never had the pleasure, nor have I come across anything to do with a Kabuki Mono where Tatara Suna is concerned. Mm -hmm. So there's no more Kabuki Mono. Did the Balladeer really manage to erase himself from the history completely? If so, he must have wanted to change the world and revert everything back to the way it was, but so far, it looks like the majority of changes have only affected himself. Thank you, Xavier. Of course. Don't mention it. Oh, we're leaving? Okay, bye, Xavier. Oh, you're most welcome. More than happy to help. Farewell. Thank God we didn't have to do the whole world Looks quest. Like you got all the information you're looking for. Time to go back and see Lesser Lord Kusanali. Sure, but what's up with you today? Whatever it is, it seems like it's really troubling you. Keep your smile, Spino Crocodile. No matter what happens, what? Paimon will always be there for you. Spino Crocodile? Thank you, Paimon. Hey, don't mention it. <laughs> I don't trust her. All right, let's head off and go meet Nahida. I don't trust Paimon either. It rhymes. Hey, I'm like hooked. Don't point at me, that's rude. Are you still talking about the essay? Indeed we are. If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. No. We have uh, time. Oh. What do you want to talk to us about? Come on, we don't have time. It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. Still looking for more info about Tatara Suna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? No. Perfect. These two have researched Tatara Suna's past. Let's hear what they have to say. Unfortunately... We haven't made any real progress. The article that you let me read last time was great. Uh, oh, uh, of course. Ugh. I'm only going to read the yellow parts, chat. A great many of these rumors revolved around the yokai who are very characteristic of Inazuma's folk histories. A small portion, however, repeatedly mentions the word outsider. It should be known that the appearance of such a character who is suspected to be based on a real person is a very curious case. This fact drew the attention of the researchers to delve further, and eventually the following piece of information came to light. A foreign mechanic once visited Tadarasuna. Reportedly, the reason for his immigration was to exchange knowledge and forge ties with his locals. However, the mechanic seemed to behave suspiciously, often wandering around essential or restricted areas, and if someone tried to turn him away, they would only earn incomprehensible mumbles from his lips. The mechanic often stared into the furnace, seemingly to check on his condition. Unsettlingly, he also spent a substantial amount of time watching the local residents. Judging from the era, it was not uncommon to see cross-cultural exchanges of technical knowledge in places such as Tadarasuna. After traveling across the tides, foreign experts became... Uh, being welcomed to the region was likely not unreasonable either. Yet, calamity came not only after this exchange of knowledge, which hints at a high potential of caus uh, causation between these events. However, some current residents believe that these assumptions were merely the results of their forebears' overactive imaginations attempting to theorize how things would actually unfold. The Mechanic. Long have I delved through many texts and documents, but I was ultimately unable to decipher even a specter uh, of a clue as to his background. Still, mentions of the Mechanic grew scarcer in the aftermath of the Tadarasuna incident. I speculate that instead of the Mechanic possibly being a figure woven from overripe imaginations, he actually did exist and perhaps even had a hand in the events that took place at Tadarasuna. I presume you'll want to read mine as well. Here. <laughs> sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we got a few highlighted areas. 
Miyazaki hid his grin. Upon hearing this, Niwa released the lizard from his hand into Katsugari's palm, but just as more words were to be exchanged, someone came walking nearby, their footsteps steady and confident. The head that appeared by the door was that one from abroad. The newcomer placed some lunchboxes to one side, nodded, and made to leave. Katsuragi called out after him, Sir, what about your meal? Are you not hungry? The man smiled upon hearing Katsuragi's words. I already ate. I hope that you, my lords, might also find time to satiate your hunger soon. You are our guest, sir. To see you help in these trifling matters fills me with embarrassment, Niwa said with sincerity. The man smiled as if it was no matter. Then, with a nod, he departed. Like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat and was joined in its bereftness of direction. Like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline. Scant steps away, the mechanic laughed, slowly approaching the grand wreck. Not but half an arm was left of the one who had cried out for help, and with a plop, it landed at the mechanic's feet, who crouched to better study the object, straining against the urge to take a bite. Yet he did not, for the dark clouds swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean. Then a second ship was sent followed by a third and a fourth. Each who left to seek salvation did so under foul skies and bleak fortunes. Reason dictated that they should not have risked anyone else, but the situation in Tadarasuna was severe. They needed to gain aid from Inazuma, even should it cost uh, them more lives. The content has changed. Another effect of tampering with the information in Ermansol. The balladeer said he'd erased two of his names. If he really succeeded, it must have taken all of his might, but still. Well, what do you think? A masterpiece! Hey, Traveler, remember how last time Akaba was saying how you wish you could gather more information about all this? Mm -hmm. Well, we just got back from Inazuma, so how about we tell them what we learned? Sure. What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... You tell the two writers what you learned about the Raiden Gokuden and wow. Tadrasa. I mean, blah, blah, blah. So many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I got you. Well, well. So it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh. You heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. There isn't, Ricky. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. And they're back <laughs> at it. Alright, we can leave them then. All right, we got some things to take care of, so uh, bye for now. Oh, so sorry. Look at us prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you. He so does look like an evil detective. Yeah. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Will do. His voice actor, though, the Ricky Gervais one, sounds very familiar. Sawada. Nahida, we're here. Traveler, Paimon, how have you been? Ugh, where to start? Paimon hasn't had a moment's rest this whole time. That night, we ended up chatting and chatting until suddenly, the sun was up. And then, he decided he wanted to go to Inazuma. I was investigating the situation with the balladeer. The balladeer? Hmm. She doesn't remember either! Like some kind of code name. Oh, God. Since we're not from this world, that's why we remember, because Ermansoul doesn't affect us. Oh, no. Troubled. Is there something you need to tell me? Oh God. Even Nahida doesn't remember. <sighs> Just like last time. Any changes to Ermin's soul affect her as well. The balladeer acted quickly. He finished erasing himself before Nahida could even stop him. The only one who still remembers the things that were erased. Once again, I am the record keeper. Traveler? Hey, what's wrong? You look so upset. There are things that have happened that only I can remember. I have to tell you the truth. With a heavy heart, you piece back together the story that was broken and scattered across time. Even about Ruka Devada? 
What? There once was an one. There once was. An, oh my Jesus Christ! There once was one named the Balladeer, created by the Electro Archon. He was a puppet who lived among men. After a series of events in Tadarasuna, the Balladeer, thinking he had been thrice betrayed, left Inazuma to roam the world beyond. With no trust for humans and only loathing for the gods, he bore his grudge for years as he grew in strength, then returned to Inazuma to take his revenge. He tried in vain to become the deity with a gnosis and ended up losing everything. Finally, he entered Ermensol and learned the truth behind his betrayal. Knowing now that his entire life was built on lies, he did the unthinkable in an attempt to reverse his tragic fate. <sighs> That's quite a story. So nothing about Ruka Devada, just, just the Balladeer. So, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermensoul, hoping that he could change the past. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Mm-hmm. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermensoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. So, you believe this person really existed? And we just don't remember him because... Well, because he literally changed the world? Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. That's why there's no information about him in Ermensoul, and it also explains why any changes to Ermensoul wouldn't affect him. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's quite incredible when you think about it. You can say that again. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this Balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. I... I'm really not sure. We were enemies, after all. I don't know his perspective on all this, so I can't just say why he did something so extreme. Did he want to reset everything? Or save someone? Or did he want to completely undo his existence? Everything can be set right. It's time to solve this once and for all. Maybe that's all there is to it. I still remember the question he asked. He asked me specifically, and my hesitation gave him his answer. I hesitated because I witnessed Greater Lord Ruka Devada erase her own existence, but I can't tell Nahida that. To put it another way, I know why the Balladeer was so sure it could work, but I can't tell them that. Something else worrying you? Something that you can't share? He chose such a radical option, and yet... It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Yeah. Once the Balladeer realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. They were the now he check. saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that. And... If he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. This story makes sense. Every part of it. The Balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the doctor's help. Right. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermensoul. Mm -hmm. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermensoul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah. It does make sense, but it still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but it seems like he got nothing in return. We don't have the full story, I don't think. Yeah, he changed the world in many ways, and yet the dead still didn't get a second chance. Those fated to a tragic end could just not be saved. What exactly did he want to fight back against? The betrayals in his life? Or did he wish he never existed at all? 
Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Did I just quote Queen? <laughs> hmm. Found it. This should be the one. Huh? Where'd you pull that from? It turns out that I have a strange way of confirming everything he has told us. What is it? A what? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You just pulled that out of your butt. You, <laughs> you should went, take a Bleh. look. Look at this. Surprisingly, the information is presented to you in a way that resembles a fairy tale. Is this a fairy tale? Who wrote it? This matches everything I said. I authored this record myself. Huh? Huh? You wrote a fairy tale that somehow has something to do with the balladeer? Huh? Wait, what? How? When combined with the traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So this record survived from the past past? Oh, that hurt my brain. Yes. Any information about the balladeer or the kabuki mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Changing the information in Ermensoul changes to that. But Ermensoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the balladeer entered Ermensoul. Whoa, that's crazy. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the traveler into Ermensoul with the balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew he'd remember everything. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermensoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one he told us. The now erased life of the balladeer. So we got lucky and she wrote a fairy tale in the past, just in case of the balladeer story. And now the history was erased and her memory forgotten, right? But then she had this lying around, which matches my story. Convenient. This is cute. Monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. That's actually really cute. Look at, him, look at him waddling around. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. But the monster <laughs> soon so found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans the kitten too wished to become a fox but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur yet when the other foxes saw this they spoke words of comfort to the kitten even without a tail and fur like ours you are still one of us Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as oh. the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this. The monster smiled led the fox toward the fire and murdered it the gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water clear spotless and pure the heck the monster gave a heart of water to the kitten telling him the foxes have decided you are the one who must be sacrificed take this quench the flames and die for your fox kin oh it's the tore and this is scara <laughs> this is sad 
The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. Mm. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight. If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. Did she illustrate that too? Whoa. I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. Huh. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. Good on you, because it, it's coming in handy now. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably... They kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my mm. own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. Dude, she's so smart, dude. It's hard to believe that this person really I mean, she is the Archon of Wisdom, right? But alone that he tried to... Get rid of us on more than one occasion. Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The Balladeer agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders. And although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before yeah. he vanished, he confirmed an important detail. That Conria was where your twin first came into this world. And was summoned. Summoned by someone. We still don't know how the change to Ermin Soul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. I've never had this feeling before. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend, but the question still troubles us. Imagine this. The Fatui summoned Lumine, and the way they summoned her was through wishing. Primo gems, right? And they, they, they're all on their little iPhones, and they're just doing it. And then out of the sky, after blue, after blue, after some purples, after some blues, a gold popped up. And the Tory was like, I hope we win this 50-50. And then, pew, Lumine. And they all cheered. And then destroyed Conrir. <laughs> Together. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. Right. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Mahir is right. Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good I guess. Paimon, why don't you take him out for a walk to clear his head? 
You got it. Come on, traveler. You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Maybe Detore's pylon, yeah. We're here. What should we eat first? I have a nagging feeling. Like there's something I'm missing. Something important that I'm forgetting. Hey, are you gonna answer or what? Sorry, it's just give me a minute. I'm still processing. She's always so hungry. Come on, brain. Let's dig this out. It's got to be in there somewhere. It was something about Ermansoul and deleting oneself. Greater Lord Rukadavada, forbidden knowledge, Mahita. What is it? Have you figured it all out? Yes, that was it. Greater Lord Rukadavada. She said that no one can erase themselves from existence, not even her. Otherwise, why would she need to create her own reincarnation in Lesser Lord Kusanali to do the deletion for her? There would be no point. Uh, why'd you jump up all of a sudden? No, I can't tell Paimon. She doesn't know about Greater Lord Rukadavada. But this is a crucially important detail. It's simply not possible for the Balladeer to completely erase his own existence. In which case, the question is... What happened to him? Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. He's right there. And he's blue. Dabba dee dabba die. He's blue. Hey, hey, wait. Hmm? You mean me? No, not you. That kid. Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh sunsetias and ran off. Look, if you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? The work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? You're boring. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. Not it's me in so the background exciting. right here. <laughs> it can be hard to focus. Who's that guy? You know him or something? A guy. Is the balladeer. He's who? You're a the balladeer. Kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. Okay, weird. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias. And I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. Then leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a... a drifter or something? That's right, I am. Uh... Huh. We can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey! We follow him. Okay, stay out of sight. Don't let him see you. Mayhaps even a wanderer? Maybe? Yeah, this'll do. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsetias? Be quiet. Is that a bit too cruel? Shush. Oh, all right. This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. If I wasn't seeing this with my own eyes, I would never believe it. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? No. Nope. <laughs> he spotted us. You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. Yeah, uh, uh, you're right. We were following you. Uh, have we met before? 
many times. No, we haven't met. But you know me? Yes. I have no recollection. It's complicated, but I do know you. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Paimon, go float somewhere else. Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. I can prove it. You're a puppet. A puppet? What makes you think that? Your father's name was Geppetto. Huh? How do you know that? <gasps> you were right. The look on his face. I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer. But seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. There's somewhere I want to take you. Okay, but please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes, I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm. And he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. That's oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? I don't believe you, but okay. Then let's return to the city. Hmm. This is interesting. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? Something's come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down, and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world. Like you had nowhere to be, and didn't even care that it was raining. You know, because you got that big umbrella hat. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even Big slightly. umbrella hat. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. Go live. This is the first character I feel like in this game that actually is my meme voice. It's like, your time is valuable, you know. You should go live your life. Stromboli. Something like that. I don't know. But I don't... Oh, he's getting confused. No, now. you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. No problemo, kiddo. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. Are you Dottore? Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. All right. What's I brought our guy. Huh? He's blue now. Are you? Hello. I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything. <laughs> so, yeah, quite an eventful walk. You tell Le Lester Lord Kusanali what happened in the Grand Bazaar. You say that you were trekking across to that to train yourself. Hmm. Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. Hmm. But these two claim that they know me, and that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. Oh. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. I don't like to rely on using terms like this often, but in your case, it seems that it ought to be called a previous incarnation. I was right. I was right. So this is their way of reincarnating Skara into a likable, nice, playable character. They did. So they changed his look a little bit. And he doesn't remember his past. 
And yeah. Oh, like a past life or something? Yeah. Yes. Something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. Okay. I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? Yeah, where is his vision? I don't see his vision. Um... Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. Yeah, you were kind of a dick. Uh, we're just trying to think where to start. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear, but I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. Is truth something you care a lot about? Yes. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, you did many things that would be considered evil. You nearly died because of what other people did. And many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Sometimes, you have to let parts of yourself go, or you'll never be happy. That's deep. Nahida tells the Wanderer about his past. I gave everything I had, but it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, that's true. Hmm. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place in time, a chain of cause and effect, a cycle of karma and consequence. Mm -hmm. That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. Not really, but a lot of the fandom loves them for some reason. <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but yeah, we weren't your biggest fans. Yeah, we were each other's enemies. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? I don't know. Uh, this is so frustrating. This guy's supposed to be our arch enemy, but now he's just some random stranger we met on the street. He's got so much to answer for, but we can't make him talk because he doesn't remember anything. Paimon, calm uh, down. What a weird situation. Lesser Lord Kusanali, as the god of wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Yes, it's all true. I mean, she wouldn't lie to you. I show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. Please, I want to see them for myself. Oh my god. I want to experience my own transgressions. Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Oh, I'm just a puppet. With no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to. To fill the void within me. Except maybe these sins that can never be undone. Okay, trauma dumping. Hello. Read the room. Very well. As you wish. Ooh, Wait, it's gonna be interesting. This one's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Again? Sure. Oh, good point. Given your, um, unique situation, we better keep an eye on you understood <sighs> thank you now prepare yourselves everyone i'm not prepared this looks like inazuma right now you're in a dream i created using information extracted from your memories oh sick okay these memories will show you the raw truth but be aware that enemies may react just like in the real world please be careful that. Sounds like an immersive experience. VR! It's a good thing we came along. You don't need to do this for me. I don't deserve your protection. It's all good. I'm already here. We never give up halfway. Well, we had to once, but that was your doing. And now we're just finishing the job. All right. Thanks. Wanderer. 
This is the Shake Pavilion. In your Balladeer incarnation, this is where the Electro Archon placed you after your creation. You had a great many memories here. Is that because this is kind of like his birthplace? You could say that, huh. in a sense. You'll see why shortly. I hear footsteps. This place is huge. I can't believe the landslide didn't fill it in. I wonder who built it. The Crystal Marrow Miners? No, there's no way. Look at this exquisite construction work, and so well preserved, too. No mining crew would be capable of this. Hmm? There's someone passed out on the ground. <sighs> Who are you? Y you're awake. What happened? How'd you get stuck here? A are you injured? Uh-huh. Not a scratch. And these fine clothes. Who are you? This man is Katsuragi. Deputy to Torichiyo's adopted son, Mikoshi Nagamasa. He found the Balladeer in Shake Pavilion and took him back to Tatarasuna. And the rest is history. Well, it used to be. In the original version of events, Katsuragi was ultimately killed by Nagamasa. Let me get you out of here. Our people are nearby. H hang in there. During the Tatarasuna incident, Niwa was murdered by the doctor disguised as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. The Balladeer, then known as the Kabuki Mono, disappeared not long after. As the second in command at Tatarasuna, responsibility for what had happened fell to Mikoshi Nagamasa. But Katsuragi had sworn lifelong loyalty to Nagamasa after the latter had once saved his life. At Katsuragi's insistence, Nagamasa killed him to put an end to the Tatarasuna incident. <sighs> wow. Katsuragi seems like he was a good guy. He looks like a warrior, but he has a kind face. Lol. Why couldn't he live a long and happy life? Hey? Nagamasa, I found this young guy in a cave sealed off by a land. Are there puzzles? He doesn't remember his name. Well, is the... we need to call you something. I hear the workers are calling you the Kabuki Mono. <sighs> That's fine with me. Okay. Katsuragi, report to me. Tell him we have ah! someone new joining us. <laughs> Adi, welcome and how are you? <laughs> oh my god. There's Thank traps you. here? Good to know. I did not know that. What's this? What the heck? What's this thing? Do? Huh? What are we doing back here? Did I do it wrong? I hear voices. This is where you were born? It's pretty, but there's nobody here. I was abandoned, like you. I lived here for a while at first, but there's nothing for us here. We can't stay. Okay. I heard my mom and dad used to make swords, but the factory manager died, and then my dad got sick. <laughs> he kept coughing all the time, just like me. Then mom started coughing too. But you can't. You promised me. Yup. We're family now. We're gonna be together forever and ever. No, they ain't. This child didn't have a name. Or rather, the balladeer didn't know what to call him. His father died before he could name him. After his mother died, the child stayed in their straw hut alone. Some of the neighbors helped to raise him. After leaving to Tarasuna, the Balladeer ran into this child who didn't have a name, just like him. They made a promise to live together. Damn, dude. What happened to the child then? He died from his illness while he was still very young. The Balladeer came home one day and found that he had stopped breathing. Oof, rough. Hey, what's wrong? Say something! You promised me we could be family! You're no different from Niwa and all the others. You betrayed me too. Bro, I'm getting, ch I'm getting chills, dude. Oh my god. 
The voices have gone. It looks like the memory ends here. Let's keep going. This place is dark. Hey! I remember this! Ugh. Paimon knows this place. It's the Delusion Factory in Inazuma. Yeah. In the original version of events, the Traveler once encountered the Balladeer here. Such a creepy atmosphere. I remember. And so familiar. I remember this. It was an unsettling place. Hey, look over there. Well, well, my fair lady. Is this rundown factory and these incompetent fools all for me? Wow. You shouldn't have. Oh, ho, ho. Forgot about you. <laughs> ah. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're just pixels, Doro. They're just pixels. Two very big pixels. Huh. What do you have to gain from belittling your subordinates? I miss you. You might not want to admit it, but you are a part of this plan. Perhaps you find fighting in the abyss to be a more meaningful use of your time? Not really. Oh, but of course, even this pales in comparison to being experimented on by the doctor. I miss her so much. <laughs> what a sharp tongue you have. Funny how negotiating never seems to be your strong suit. For the task ahead, I suggest you keep your true feelings to yourself. Hm. <laughs> Save your breath. I know what I have to do. I'm sure you think so, but I still think you need to hear it. Don't start thinking you're invincible, and don't let your emotions get in the way. That's exactly what happened. Surely you're not worried about me. I just can't have you getting in my way. You and child never fail to find ways to complicate things. I'm merely lighting a little fire in this chaotic nation. But you, being tossed out like trash, must make you want to destroy it completely. Do you remember the last time you were here? That was a lot of swordsmiths you killed. I'm sure the descendants of the ride in Gokaden are still suffering the consequences now. Look at you. Oh, don't get so sentimental. Now, give that poor little tongue of yours a rest and stop pretending like you're above everyone else. Bye then. See you at the victory feast. <laughs> Damn, the recoil. I'm sorry. I'm so, totally I'm so bad. <laughs> She's playing with fire talking to me like that. Who does she think she is? <sighs> Forget it. Someone might find me here any minute now. I should prepare to give them a warm welcome. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> the plot does not end here. There is more of this story to come. Wanderer. Are you able to continue? Yes. Please don't worry about me. All right. Why are Oh you no. <laughs> oh my. Stay in place for me. Wonderful I missed. Oh, I did not. You're in trouble, lady. Besides, I thought nothing mattered to you except results in your own interests. Isn't that right? Which? Can you can you get out of the corner? <laughs> Muddle-headed puppet. You're only number did he, six. Did she just call him a muggle? Than other humans. Do you really count that? There as an oh, asset? there's more. Where did you come from? About as much fun to be around as a raging inferno. But before we murder each other, it'd be best if we finish our duties. There we go. Easy peasy. Muddle headed, she said. Oh, she called him confused and dumb. Oh, like me. Got you. What 
I kind of hate this form of cutscene where they talk while we fight my attention. I know, I don't like that either. I don't like my attention being split because I want to hear what they're saying, but I have to fight. And then I'm just like, okay. Uh, is that? Considering that Amorta's sage, Nafis, refused to join this project, I'll take part in the experiment in his place. Welcome. I look forward to a fruitful collaboration. Oh, the demon man. <sighs> When do we start? You seem impatient. You should know that becoming a god is far from a trivial affair. The biological transformation is a lengthy process. Oh, this guy? Ugh. As such, I, I too would recommend that we commence as soon as possible. In the event that a successful connection is established, his body will become permanently bound to the machine, and he will be unable to move independently of it. Nothing worse than what I've been through before then, Doctor. You were the most resilient test subject I ever came across. Thanks to you, I was able to garner a great deal of information. Alas, this guy might be the Tory, though. We're under orders to remain in the abyss. We barely saw each other, and it became difficult to further refine the knowledge I had gained. That was gracefully worded. Ever wonder what they think if they knew that nothing matters to you apart from your crazy experiments? I suggest you speak to me in a more respectful tone, Scaramouche. The mere fact of your utility does not make you indestructible. The doctor again? Oh, that was uncomfortable to watch. That person gives off a very sinister energy. He is very sinister. He's the doctor. He's behind all of this. It's normal for him to give you the creeps. He scares the bejeebers out of Paimon. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Let's move on. Please. You're a god. Do you think I'm evil? If you accept that he is you, just as you are you, then yes, you are evil. In your eyes, are there any differences between humans and puppets? Do you think there are any differences between your present self and your previous and future incarnations? If not, then what are the differences between humans and puppets? Whoever has tasted the joys and sorrows of life in the human realm is human. Whoever has loved and lost, cried with grief, howled with rage at the tragedy of death that eclipses the miracle of life, they are human too. <sighs> I've seen enough of my past. If possible, I'd like to reclaim the sins that are mine to bear. No matter the consequences, I won't run from blame or punishment. Whatever I am due, let it come to pass. Are you saying? Can you return my memories to me? Uh, I have the feeling they were gonna do that after you guys said about his voice lines minorly spoiling it for me. Kind of have a feeling maybe they'll return his memories or like do some wibbly wobbly stuff. I see. So he tried getting away from his problems. And then in the end, this new Scar, this new wonder is like, no, I got to deal with this trauma. I got to do some shadow work within me. So bring it back, baby. Huh? But won't that mean you'll lose your current identity? I've always believed that human lives follow a set of rules. With each person being a collection of past experiences. As a puppet living in a human world, my life is subject to the same rules. Regaining your memories Good guy wander. completely to your previous incarnation. All the emotions that you discarded will return to you. And then he'll go back to like being Scar. Are you sure you want to do this? I've lived with a void in my chest my whole life. My creator didn't need me. And ever since I awoke, I've just drifted from one place to the next. But then I met you. And I finally realized that reclaiming my missing sins might be my one opportunity to become my true self. Is this the true meaning of Greater Lord Rukadavada's words? A person can't erase themselves. And even though the original balladeer has gone, this person will live on in his place. Are a person's sins an inescapable part of their destiny too. I've always felt I have an innate tendency to yearn for something more in a way that goes deeper than for most people. 
But for all my soul searching as a Shugenja, I've never fully understood it. Looking at it now, it seems that I brought this curse upon myself. Yeah, pretty much. So I beg you, grant me this opportunity to gain a purpose, to change my destiny, and end my wandering. Very well. Since your mind is made up, I will return to you that which is yours. His memories. You have made your decision. Now, take this. <sighs> Dude, the animation. Set him free. A puppet? What's he doing here? It's... You're human as far as I'm concerned. Everyone's here. Wonderful. What a fine blade. Nagamasa will be thrilled. This is my... Oh my god. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just a memory. God, the traveler is so badass. I always forget about that. God, dude, the animations are so sick. I forget how badass Traveler is. Hey, <laughs> All worthless dross will be purged. That's why this won't be the end. Huh? Oh. Dude, I'm like speechless right now. Oh, this is like an anime moment, dude. And the music? And that's how he gets his vision? <laughs> Die. Oh, 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 no, dude, that was, hold on, pause it. No, pause it. Stop it, I need to process what I just went through, dude. That was insanely cool, dude. That was so freaking awesome. Oh my God, that was awesome. Oh, dude, this is so cool! The wind rises. Dude, I love him. He's so cool to play. I'm going over here. Okay, we're almost there. We got this, chat. Got it. Dude, Skara is so much fun to play, man. Is there going to be a phase two to this? Okay, no. That doesn't look like it. Let's go. Imbecile. Get out of my sight. Imbecile. He called himself an imbecile. <laughs> What did you expect? I'd never lose to that. Oh, he's back. <sighs> There's that tone of voice again. You're definitely back to your old self. Wait, but it was you inside that thing too. What have you got to be smug about? Sorry, I'm harsh on myself and everyone else. Just the way I am. Well, now that you've recovered your memories. <laughs> 
You sound like you're concerned about me. I want to be your friend. But don't worry. Thanks to you, even if I didn't change a thing, at least I now know the truth. The memory recovery seems to have been a success. This dream has served its purpose. Come on. Let's continue this outside. Bet. Welcome back, traveler, Paimon, Balladeer. <sighs> it feels like we just went on a really long journey. Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> it has been a very long quest. You don't like being addressed by that name? It's fine. But I was just thinking, I should probably change it. You won't go by the Balladeer anymore? After learning about everything the doctor did, there's no way I can carry on using a name connected to him. That's true. I'm not planning on returning to the Fatui. And they wouldn't take me back anyway. Recent events will have affected a lot of people. And they might not even remember who the sixth is. So, you're quitting the Fatui for good? <sighs> it's like you said, Lesser Lord Kusanali. Everything may look futile. But it wasn't completely meaningless. At least I made a lot of people forget about me. But that doesn't hmm. mean your own past has disappeared. True. Of course. And your main goal, for which you gave up everything you had, you weren't able to achieve it. I hope you can see and understand that. Changing the world, changing the past, changing the fates of other people, these are not simple things to accomplish. What you are looking for is complete annihilation. But this is just a fantasy. Even if the Balladeer is removed from existence, the world will not heed your will. Mm -hmm. Indeed. <laughs> How ridiculous. Do you regret doing all that when you've gotten so little in return? Even if I'm completely worthless, there's nothing in the world worth regretting. Lesser Lord Kusanali. Good way to look at it. You purposely left that information in Nermansol, didn't you? Yes. And I took pains to make sure that you'd acquire that information naturally. Why would you go to such lengths? You trying to win me over too? In all honesty, your past experiences have made you a useful asset to Sumeru and to me. Winning you over was indeed a part of my plan. But before that, I wanted to tell you the truth about your past. If all I wanted to do was use you, then I'd be no different from the doctor. True. Very clever. I guess you could say that's one of my virtues. <laughs> Utility to others is what gives me worth. So if embracing my sins is what it takes to make me useful again, so be it. Nahida doesn't see you in that way. Oh, right. I almost forgot. You're the good guys. You're into justice and all that. Sorry if I have a slightly different perspective on things, but I don't feel like I've been duped. The wisest leaders are fated to end up with the best helpers. I can live with that. I'm glad you're able to think of it in that way. Travel Whatever helps. In the future, I'll continue to search Ermin's soul more deeply and see what secrets can be uncovered, including the beginning of your twin's journey recorded in Ermin's soul. Yes, please. What exactly happened before and after that point? I want to know as well. Thank you. Let's hope you can find some answers. I will try. Traveler. Yes? After I dove into the information torrents in Ermansoul, why did you go to Inazuma? Because I wanted to know what you'd changed. So that's how you found out whose fate had changed. And how. Yeah, I'm pretty smart like that. Well, whatever your reasons, you did me a favor. And I'll do everything I can to pay it back. I didn't do it for a reward. Borrowing and returning are the only real relationships between individuals. I'll balance the books one day. Don't you worry. Okay. That's not true. What does that mean? A relationship mean? between two people is not simply a ledger that can be reset to zero. I think deep down you realize this. People who show up in your life don't just evaporate like water drops and leave nothing behind. There is no such thing as balancing the books. Some things in this world can never be brought back. And they can never be changed. Which is why there is emotion in the human world. Everything that you feel is real and lasting. And whatever is missing in you will not be made whole. To be human is to live with imperfections. That's you can true. choose whether or not you want to be human. Dude. 
This is awesome. But humans can't live without a heart, can they? Anyway, I gave up trying to become a human a long time ago. You understand what pain is perfectly well, even without a heart. You're just bearing your feelings. The past is set. He does a giga chat. <laughs> you can keep moving on. And the longer your future lasts, the shorter your past will become. Until one day, it is but a tiny fraction of your life. Sounds like you've got a future planned out for me. I hope you can give Nahida a chance. Everything's ended up being pretty darn complicated. Paimon doesn't even know where to start, but... The most important thing now is that you need to follow Nahida. Otherwise, all our efforts will have been... Yeah, be a good boy. <laughs> or just wander off. Okay. Then I guess I'll be helping you from behind the scenes from now on. Let's go. Good guy wanderer. I'm glad that you've accepted our proposal. Why don't you choose a new name to celebrate? Oh, oh, oh! Paima wants to pick an ugly nickname for you too. Oh God. Why? Is this where we get to pick his name? Because, because Paima still doesn't like you that much. <laughs> then I hope we don't see much of each other in the future. A name is life's first gift. You didn't say it out loud, but I know that's what you're thinking. <sighs> the traveler and Paimon have What do we him name out. him? If you can't decide on Hat name, Man? Maybe you can ask them for ideas. You should name him Kyle. Can we name him anything? No, Paimon only does nicknames. If it's a serious oh name you're after, it's all yours. Uh, have you got anything? I'm gonna name him my real name. Dorian. That's cool. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I think oh. it'll do. All right. If you say so. That's sick. Oh, that's cool. There. Now you have a name of your own. What about a nickname? <laughs> that's so cool. That's so cool! I love that. Uh, I... Still thinking! Stop rushing me! Take your time. I don't need to see you again until you've thought of one. Everyone who manipulated me and made me suffer will have to pay the price. Oh, okay. You mean the Fatui? The doctor, at least. That's true. Now that your stance has changed, I believe your future path will change accordingly. But it won't be immediate. You still need some Ooh, time to compose chills. yourself. Hmm. One more thing. There are still some descendants of the Raiden Gokuden living in Inazuma. Some of them I love know. seeing this. This is so cool. Well, they ought to know about the connection between Raiden Gokuden and myself. I don't plan to leave Sumeru for the time being. If you see them in Inazuma, please tell them that I was the one responsible for the Raiden Gokuden's downfall. Okay. Even though the events have been erased from the world, they still deserve to know the truth. I see. That is up to you. Huh? But if we do that, then... It's fine. Let them stab their blades into my chest if they so desire. Maybe that's how it always should have been. Fine. <laughs> no nonsense. I like it. All right. Let's call it a day. Goodbye, wise deity. And you too. Bye, Dorian. What he went through today would have been like living an entire lifetime in an instant. Yeah, yeah that's true. He'll need some time to calm down. Yeah, true. But even so, after everything that's happened, he doesn't seem quite as fierce anymore. There are some bumps along the way, but it's all over now. So we can finally go eat? Paimon is starving. Thank you both. I hope you will find somewhere nice to go and relax for a while. I've got it! I can end my novel with some words from Mikoshi Nagamasa. You mean because everyone else in the story is dead? <laughs> yeah! I heard that Mikoshi Nagamasa died at a ripe old age. He's the perfect fit to be the narrator of the epilogue. The dark clouds had dissipated, but they continue to cast their shadow in Mikoshi Nagamasa's mind 
for decades to come. Then, one night, as an old man, he had a dream. On the night when that prized blade, the Daitatara Nagamasa, was forged, the people rejoiced, and there was painting, dancing, and drinking. All these expressions of joy melted down in the furnace fire and turned into red clouds that rallied around the final sunrise that Mikoshi Nagamasa saw in his lifetime. I should have named him Sugar Baby 44. That's funny. Life is a story too long to be told. A journey that you must walk to behold. <laughs> It's about time we had a break. As soon as you stop, all the tiredness and hunger comes rushing back. Rest up, Paimon. Wow, great! Huh? Look at that vase. What about it? Did someone break it while they were cleaning the room or something? Like, Paimon doesn't remember there being a cleaner. That night we stayed here, Paimon bumped into the table after being startled by something to do with the balladeer and broke the vase. But the balladeer erased his existence. He changed the world. So why is this vase still broken? You sound lost and confused. Who is that? Who is that? I know why you are troubled. Any who knew of this would find their mind overwhelmed. Who is that? Huh? Is there someone here talking to us? Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance, but for anyone else, <sighs> who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate. Like a vase that falls to the ground. Whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, the result is still a broken vase, is it not? Why does it sound like Yai Miko? Uh, who are you? How do you know about all this? History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. Huh? The voice has disappeared. First and foremost, why does everyone have access to my brain in this game, dude? Believe my eyes. Does she mean I should trust my memories? Uh, anyway, that face is still lying there, broken on the ground. Who was that? Did Simon go get someone to clean it up? It feels wrong just leaving it there. Just a moment, Paimon will be right back. Okay. I wonder what else awaits me in the future. You can't just end it there. That was the quest, dude. How long are we going to have to wait for the next quest? Uh, what, dude? Th that was awesome. That was freaking awesome. That was an awesome quest. Amazing. It sets up for a lot of stuff. There's a lot more questions I have now. I... Wow.